Hello there and welcome to the series of videos that's going through the A-level maths content for the first year. Here we're on straight line graphs uh, on y equals mx plus c, looking to answer exercise 5a and 5b. So, let's get started then. So the equation of a straight line is always written as y equals some number times x plus some other number, and we generally say y equals mx plus c. And what these two numbers mean in terms of the shape of our graph is that the uh, m value it represents the gradient of our graph. And this is for every one we go across on the x-axis, we're going to go up by that amount on the y-axis. That's what we define as the gradient. So for example, if we were looking at the graph y equals 3x plus 5, for every time we increase our x-coordinate by 1, we would increase the y-coordinate by 3. Okay, so that would be a 3 going upwards here. If our graph was downward sloping, <coughs> this way here, then our gradient would just be a negative value. So for example, this graph here might look like the line y equals minus 3x minus 2, for example. Now, why did we change these numbers at the end here as well? Well, what these numbers here represent is the y-intercept. And that's where the equation of the line crosses the, um, the y-axis. Okay, so given that you know the number that it crosses the y-axis and the gradient, how much it goes up by for going one to the right, you can really quickly draw the equation of a line. So, for example, if I wanted to draw the equation of the line y equals 2x plus 7, then I would start my graph at 7, and for then every coordinate I went right by 1, I would go up by 2. So my next coordinate would be at 1, 9, because I started at 0, 7. I could also go backwards as well, 1 left and 2 down this time to fit the pattern. So that would be minus 1, 5. And I could continually do this for infinity down to the left and infinity up to the right. And my graph would roughly take that sort of shape. So it's really useful to have the equations in this form here to be able to know what the gradient is and the y-intercept is. If you know those two, you can really easily draw a graph. OK, let's move on to the equation of a line and working out its gradient to start with. Now, you can always work out the gradient of a line from two of the coordinates on that line. What you're looking for there is the ratio between the change that x is experiencing and the change that y is experiencing. So let's define our first coordinate. This is coordinate number one in this case here, so it has the letters x1, y1, and the second coordinate that's up here, we're going to give those letters x2 and y2, and we'll create a formula out of this that you can use later. Now what we need to do here is we need to look at the ratio that y is going up by in relation to how much x is increasing by, and then we'll compare it to the ratio of 1 across and how many up. So what we need to do is we need to look at how far this blue line goes across and how much this blue line goes up. And then the formula that you need to remember, everyone, is that the gradient is y2 take away y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Now it's really important that you get the positions of all of these numbers correct in your formula. So if you've taken one of your coordinates as the second coordinate, make sure both of those coordinates go at the start of each of your fraction, denominator and numerator. And for the coordinate one, make sure they both go at the back. This is the classic way that people accidentally get confused. Let's show this in action then. So for example, actually we've got an example over here, haven't we? Let's show this in the question then. <clears throat> so we have the coordinates of minus 2, 7 and 4, 5. So let's just draw a little quick sketch of what is going on here. We have the coordinate minus 2, 7, so that's going to be roughly up here, minus 2, 7, 
and the coordinate 4, 5. So it does look like indeed this gradient here is going to have a negative value. Now what we'll do here is we'll call this the coordinate 1 and this the coordinate 2. And what we're going to look at doing here then is the change in y divided by the change in x. So what we need to do here is y2 minus y1 to start with. Now given that this is my uh, second coordinate, that needs to go in first into my formula. So 5 needs to go in first. Then it's take away the coordinate 1 y value, that's 7. Then we divide that by coordinate 2's x value, 4, and we subtract coordinate 1's x value. Now notice here how the coordinate has a negative value. Make sure that negative value comes in to your formula as well, because this is going to form a double negative, so that will in fact make the denominator here 6. So in fact here the calculation that we're going to get is minus 2 over 6, or minus a third. So that means that for every movement right that we go by, we're going to move down by a third each time. And that will get us from coordinate 1 to coordinate 2. <clears throat> right, let's have a look at a very similar question here. We're joining the coordinates 2 minus 5 to 4a. We know it has a gradient of minus 1. So in this formula here, <clears throat> we know that the coordinate, that the value m is going to be minus 1. So minus 1 is going to appear at the start, but what we need to do is we need to work out one of the values inside this coordinate here. So attaching a coordinate 1 and 2 to our different coordinates and substituting the values into the correct positions in the formula. <coughs> we can then simplify and rearrange to work out that a is the value minus 7. Okay, so going back to the equation of a straight line, y equals mx plus c, it's really easy from those equations to be able to pull off what the gradient and the y-intercept is, and then in fact to draw a little sketch of it as well. In this case here, we're going to start our graph at 0, 2, so that's this coordinate here. And we're going to go right 1, always right 1, and down by 3, because it tells us that the gradient is negative 3, this value here. So go right 1, and if we're starting at 2, we're going to need to go down to minus 1. So 1 minus 1 is our first value here. We can keep on doing this for infinity, really. Write one again, down 3. That's 2 minus 4. The next one would be 3, negative 7. We could also go backwards as well. So 1 left, we'd have to do the opposite of minus 3. That's positive 3. And you can see here that that would follow the pattern. So that's going to be minus 1, 5. And joining all of these coordinates together forms the line that represents y equals minus 3x plus 2. Sometimes they give you the equations in this horrible form here. Now all we need to do for this to pick off the gradient and the y-intercept is just to rearrange this to make y the subject. So just add y onto the other side first, divide through by 2, and you get 2x plus 5 over 2 equals y. So you could rewrite this as 2x y equals 2x plus 5 over 2. Now 5 over 2 is 2.5, so we'd effectively start up at 2.5 here, and we'd go right 1, up 2. So that would now get us to 1, 4.5. 2, 6.5 would be next, and so on. So our equation would look like that. Gradient of 2 y-intercepts of 0, 5 over 2, or 2.5. Okay, sometimes, once you've worked out the answer to a question, they want you to put the answer back in this sort of form here, and you'll see a question like that later. So, if your initial equation is y equals 4x plus 3, 
then all you need to do to make to make your answer look like this is subtract y and then just rewrite it out to make sure that everything lines up nicely. So what I mean by that is that the x number goes first, the y term goes second, and the value that's just a number goes third, and you've got your zero on the other side. So this is just sometimes how they want you to write your final answer. It's no big deal apart from just rearranging a little bit. Okay, sometimes you get an equation that looks a bit like this, particularly where there are fractions, they want you to write your final answer like this. So in which case here, just move everything onto one side but and get rid of any fractions as well. So double your values in your equation, so times by 2, you get 2y plus x minus 10. But remember, we want it to be written in the correct order. So put your x value first, then your y, then your number. Okay, another little technique and a little bit of problem solving that they want you to do is to work out where a line would cross the x-axis. Now, it's really easy to find where it crosses the y-axis. That's just the value 8, because that's the y-intercept. But the x-axis is a little bit more tricky. If we were to draw a graph of what's happening here, we're starting at 8, we're going up 4 each time, so it's not going to cross the x-axis going up here, what we need to go is backwards and we would get an intersection somewhere in the negatives. So this here is the coordinate that we want to find. So what we need to do here is we need to use the understanding that if we're looking for this coordinate here, then the y part of this coordinate is equal to zero. Think about it, if you're a coordinate here, it's maybe you're minus 4, 0. That last term that you were at there, 0, was effectively the y-coordinate. So you need your y-coordinate to equal 0 when you're intersecting this x-axis. So set your y-coordinate equal to 0 like we've done here in our equation. These x and y values, they're effectively coordinates fitting a certain rule. So your y-coordinate needs to equal 0, and then you just need to work out what x is. x is minus 2. So this coordinate that we found here was the coordinate minus 2, 0. Okay, so please remember, to, remember this technique that if you want to find an intersection of an axis, you set the other component of that coordinate equal to 0. OK, now, it's your turn to have a go at some questions now. What you need to do here is pause the video and have a go at these questions independently. Then I'll go through the answers afterwards. Right, well done for pausing the video and having a go at these questions here. It's really important that you do this to check your understanding of the content we've just gone through, um, and then we can go through these answers together. Work out the gradients of the lines joining 4, 2 to 6, 3. So let's just draw a quick sketch of what's going on here. We have the coordinate 4, 2 and the coordinate 6, 3. And what we want to do is work out the gradient of this line here. So what we'll have to do is number up the coordinates. We'll call this coordinate 1 and this coordinate 2 and apply the formula. So you've got to remember this. It's y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, which is equal to, so on the second equation, the y value is 3. On the first equation, the y value is 2. On the second equation, your x value is 6. And on the first equation, your x value is 4. So here we get the value of a half. Now what you could have done as well is just look at this from a graphical point of view. If you have to go 2 across on your x-axis and 1 up on your y-axis, then the formula that sometimes people use is difference in y over difference in x. Your difference in y here was go up by 1, and your difference in your y-coordinate was go up by 2. So your gradient is a half. So you get the same answer both ways. Now, question 7 here on page 93 is a little bit more tricky. The line L passes through the line, the points, 0, 5 and 6, 7. Write the equation of the line 
in this form here. So let's start at 0, 5, and it's quite useful to have that 0, 5 coordinate because that's the y-intercept. If we think about y equals mx plus c, which we'll start with, we know our answer needs to look like this, but we'll start with this. We know that the c part now, because it crosses the y-axis at that point, is 5. But now we need to work out what m is. And the way we work out m is by using this formula here. So 6, 7 is our next coordinate. And what I'll do here, I think I'll use the difference in y over difference in x formula. So in this case here, we've gone up by 5 to 7 on our y-axis. So that's a difference of 2. And on the x-axis, we've gone from 0 to 6. So that's a difference of 6. Cancel down the fraction and you get a third. So now we know the equation of our graph. It's y equals a third x plus 5. But now we need to rearrange. So y equals a third x plus 5. What I'm going to do first is times through by 3. So 3y equals x plus 15. And now given that I want my x to be at the front, I'm going to take away 3y onto the other side. So I get 0 equals x plus 15 minus 3y. But I'm just going to reorder that final answer. So we get the x part first, so that's x. Then the y part next, that's minus 3. Add 15 equals 0. So that's your final answer. If you got the answer of minus x plus 3y minus 15 equals 0, then that as well is the correct answer. You can see here, if we were just to times by minus 1 on all of our terms here, then they're the same answer effectively. However, what I'd prefer is this answer here because it has fewer negatives in it. So I'd prefer the answer that I came up with here. However, if you got this one, you'd still be correct. Right, thank you very much for watching this video. Now, what you need to do is stop the video and have a go at questions from exercise 5a and 5b. It's really important that you go through questions in this exercise here to consolidate your knowledge and practice, practice, practice. Therefore, when it becomes tough for the questions, you're really familiar with this type of content and you can do it automatically. When you're doing these questions, make sure you persevere through the difficult ones. And if you really get stuck, then ask your teacher for help. Thanks very much for watching.